In order to get good results in school and work on your business and actually get it to grow, you need to have an optimized brain as well as an optimized workflow. And that comes with eliminating your brain fog. So picture me, I'm trying to get work done that I know is valuable, like creating a YouTube video, doing math homework, or writing an English essay for school. And I'm finding myself that I just cannot focus. I can't think of just memories that would help me out with doing the task I'm doing. I can't seem to remember how to do the task I'm doing and the skills that I thought I had are gone. I'm frustrated, I'm tired, and I just can't focus. And the time's passing, the time's ticking, and the amount of time that I had before, suddenly it's cut in half, and I haven't done anything. And that hurts. It literally, like, physically painful. I feel it in my throat, I get like a little hole in my stomach, and I'm realizing, man, I'm wasting time, and time you cannot get back. I used to wait for a time where circumstances would perfectly line up and I would have the clarity and direction to get the things that I wanted to get done done. However, those perfect times, those perfect right state of minds, they come so rarely that most of the time we're left with almost this brain fogginess. And the great success comes from the great work you do. And that great work comes from saying brain fog. I'm going to make the right circumstance. This video is not going to go into things that you already know, like get good sleep, do a backflip, get good nutrition. This is science backed protocols that I had to figure out. And I actually went and actively watched like scientific dudes <laughs> like doing their things. So I have a full arsenal of protocols that I have for so for whenever I'm feeling this way whenever I'm feeling this brain fog I know exactly what to do and I do it so if you can sit through this video you will have a full blueprint of how you can dissolve that brain fog and pulverize your work number one it starts with understanding dopamine adrenaline and autonomic arousal now autonomic arousal is the extent to which you are feeling anxious and alert now that basically means if you got a high autonomic arousal then you've got a high speed heart rate maybe you're sweating a little bit maybe you're trembling or shaking you are so awake that you might not even be able to focus on the work that you're doing because you just don't know what to do with all your energy. And low autonomic arousal results in like a difficulty in sustaining attention or inability to focus on any task of little stimulation or little immediate importance. Sound familiar, man? Because it does for me. So basically, autonomic arousal is talking in terms of stress. And the way you break out of brain fog is that you release the hormones and neurotransmitters that cause you to act your immediate best. And maybe you might be thinking, but no, stress is bad. <laughs> no, stress is a way for your body to mobilize its resources. So therefore, it is good. It is that fight or flight response. Imagine if there was a hungry tiger right in front of you and you had just woken up. Imagine you open your eyes and then there's just like a tiger in the end of your room right there. You would have to act your immediate best. Either you have to fight your way out or you have to run or else you are gone. You are dead. Either you choose fight or flight, you have to survive and you will find a way to survive. So part of breaking out of brain fog is leveraging that release in hormones and neurotransmitters that will get you doing your best. Specifically, we have to leverage dopamine and adrenaline. Dopamine because it's linked to motivation or it'll actually make you enjoy doing the hard work and make you actually want to do the work because, you know, while we shouldn't rely on motivation, we're relying on discipline. The discipline part of this is actually getting the work done, but the motivation, wouldn't you rather be motivated to do it? Because I know I would. The cool thing with dopamine also is that it'll give you more of a clear head because you were directed, you were so motivated that your brain, it actually wants to figure out how to do all the work. So you do figure it out. Then you have adrenaline because it's linked to the autonomic arousal. Think if you have a high autonomic arousal, like we said before, then you're feeling anxious. That's your adrenaline pumping. That's your adrenaline rush. So what we want to do is we want to give ourselves adrenaline rushes. That is what most of the protocols that we have here for are giving you. You are going to feel pumped up after this. The first time you try this, you're going to feel like, well, like totally sharp and totally ready. How do you implement that information into actual actionable steps? Well, the cold shower, what the cold shower does is that it increases dopamine by 250 to 300%. That is absurd. Think about that. Really think about that. When I say 250 to 300%, that's more than tobacco, like smoking and cocaine, cocaine, that stuff that people get hooked on because Cold showers, what they do is they'll make you breathe like heavy, like <laughs> you're cold. So you get that shock to your system. And suddenly when you're also out, scientifically, they say that people feel proud of themselves when they come out of the cold shower. So that also spikes their dopamine. And the cool thing is also with cold showers is that 
they don't just give you that dopamine spike now. And usually when your dopamine spikes, it goes lower than baseline, but they don't give you that dopamine spike. now. that dopamine spike lasts for hours after you have your cold shower. And that is what makes the cold shower just so entirely effective. Then there's performing the Edison. So when I say performing the Edison, that is Thomas Edison. He used to take naps in his chair holding two metal balls. Sounds kind of fruity to me. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, so when he'd be taking his nap, he would slowly start to relax his muscles and then what would happen would be that the balls would drop and they'd hit the floor and then suddenly he'd be hit out of relaxation then he would have just full clarity on the problems or things that he was dealing with that he had no idea how, how to deal with and we will perform this in a more effective way actually using a nervous system reset and an alarm almost simulating that tiger example that we had before and then there's coffee so the way coffee works is that coffee the caffeine binds to the adenosine receptors in your brain and basically the adenosine receptors adenosine is the hormone that makes you feel tired the the neurotransmitter that makes you feel tired so when caffeine takes its place suddenly you cannot feel tired because the adenosine cannot park in its spot imagine you're driving a car and you're trying to park in your spot but you're not able to because there is another car there that's basically how caffeine works and drinking coffee makes your body more receptive to adrenaline and dopamine doesn't necessarily spike your dopamine that like a lot of people say but apparently according to the scientific studies i had seen coffee prolongs the effects of dopamine and makes it more intense for the amount that you have so we talked about dopamine adrenaline and autonomic arousal next up is nsdr when you sleep your nervous system it resets which basically means that your brain gets its ready to operate the next day so if you don't get enough sleep you simply are not ready for the next day and you are more prone to brain fog but like i said i'm not telling you that you need to sleep more because bro you already know that you want an actionable step and that is what i'm giving you non-sleep deep rest nsdr or yoga nidra but yoga nidra sounds a mystical and <laughs> a little bit funny so i just call it non-sleep deep rest so non-sleep deep rest it's a powerful tool with actually countless benefits backed by science that include reduced stress better brain function improve sleep quality later even after you do it so later in the day boosts your physical and mental well-being it's good for learning and neuroplasticity de-stressing improving brain capacity it can help you recover lost sleep and that i i, I did I, that blew my mind when i first learned about this because even maybe you're you have so many things that you have to attend to you have like so many just different things you're working on now non-sleep deep rest sometimes even when you don't get the sleep and you wake up feeling groggy you wake up feeling bad and you actually you don't have time to go back to sleep but then maybe later you do have like let's say 30 minutes or even less even 15 minutes five minutes sometimes non-sleep deep rest has the potential to give you that lost sleep that you had and make you feeling make you wake up or open your eyes feeling refreshed all of this basically means that it resets your nervous system so if you had a high or low autonomic arousal you either were too energized that you could not focus or too little energy that you could not focus it basically would reset you and then you just be chill <laughs> just a just a chill guy so there's a link in the description for my favorite nsdr script i've tested many and this one i just keep coming back to because it's my favorite just let yourself relax and trust the process because if you don't trust the process you cannot actually just relax effectively just remember to set an alarm because that is vital if you fall asleep and you end up sleeping for hours and hours, maybe even the whole night, and you don't end up actually doing the work that you set out to do, that's a problem because now you have even less time to do the work. Non-sleep deep rest is leveraged the best when you actually fall asleep and you actually fall asleep and then you have that alarm that wakes you up like there's a tiger in the corner of your room. The first time I tried it, I thought it would be like a little bit iffy. I didn't really trust if it would be actually that effective. I thought it would be a waste of time, but... I actually tried it out and it was so worth it. I woke up feeling like I had actually had one of those sleeps that you had when you're younger, where you wake up and you are just, just so ready and reset for the whole day. And you might be thinking, what if I have less time to do the thing I'm actually, that I actually need to work on? Well, yeah, you do have less time, but also you show up and you were more ready. When I sat down to do the work, I did more in 40 minutes than I could have done in the full hour that I had. Now the question arises, should I listen to music? Well. The obvious answer is yes, bro. If you if you could listen to music and it actually makes you feel better, then great. 
However, sometimes you might notice that listening to music, it's good for your productivity. And then other times it's actually bad and it makes it's harder to focus with music. The reason that is the reason why sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't is because of your autonomic arousal level. If you're tired and less focused, meaning you have a low autonomic arousal, then listening to music would actually be good for you. You need more noise in your brain to make up for the little noise that you have outside. But if there's too much noise in your head, maybe you're feeling anxious and you have a high autonomic arousal, then listening to music would actually be detrimental to your work block and you'd be better off with silence. Another actionable step and tool that you can use for when you're going into your work block and you need to focus and you're not quite sure if you're able to focus and maybe you don't have time to do the non-sleep deep rest script is binaural beats. Now what binaural beats are is this two frequencies going off on either side of your head when you're wearing headphones. Basically what it does is it helps you with concentration, problem solving, and memory. You'll listen to this either five minutes before you start doing it or even during and doing your work and even during, it will give you these benefits and also give you better sleep later in the day according to the scientific studies and the more smarter guys than me look around yourself and be honest are there clothes on your floor are there empty mugs glasses or bottles are things just out of their place be honest and clean first of all your external environment is a reflection of your internal environment so be honest with yourself if you've got things scattered about all in your external environment then you will have all the things scattered around in your brain so what does all of this look like in an actual science-backed protocol first thing i do when i'm feeling this way is i go downstairs and i make myself a coffee and i leave it cooling down now i go back upstairs and prepare a set of clothes so right after I prepare a set of clothes, I do the non-sleep deep rest and that gives me a nervous system reset and suddenly an alarm goes off and I place it a little bit near me so that the loud noise almost, I let it jump scare me. You have to let it scare you. You have to be so relaxed that you kind of believe that you're almost in a little bit of danger. So immediately after you're waking up by that alarm, you spring out of your bed and you make your bed if you mess it up. And so you chug your coffee. Now, a lot of people will be saying, shouldn't you drink your coffee while you're doing your work? Well, no, because the reason why you're drinking the coffee is because you want the caffeine. You have your shot of coffee and you bolt, you go into the cold shower and you just start it and you have a cold shower, you come outside, your dopamine has skyrocketed and the coffee, it's starting to kick in. You go get dressed and you sit down, you put on some binaural beats while you're working and you just go. You literally just start and you keep going and you don't stop until you are done. You can do this in under 30 minutes. Even if you're rushing, you can do a quick script, a quick non-sleep deep rest script and do all of this in 15 minutes. You will be working refreshed and totally reset. Now I'm gonna tell you some quick tips to prevent brain fog. So I've given you the protocol and then right after I do this, I'm gonna tell you honestly, the biggest piece of information that really helped me and yeah, let's continue. Stay fasted for your work. So don't eat before you actually do the work because more gut, more blood goes to your gut and less blood actually goes to your brain. So it's harder to focus and you might be, and you might be feeling lethargic because you have more of a glucose crash because of the carbs that you eat. If you do eat, don't eat too, too much and stick to meat and drinking water. Often brain fog is caused by bloating because of your diet. If you want to minimize bloating and you wake up maybe in the mornings, you're feeling kind of foggy too, groggy, you wanna have antioxidants. There's also antioxidants in coffee. So that's also why that's part of the protocol. And then there's also antioxidants in fruits like blueberries, blackberries, you know, the darker kind of berries, the bluish purplish kind. And something else to consider is you can take magnesium. I take magnesium L-theanine and that basically gives you like a calm and meditative state. So sometimes a lot of people may have a high autonomic arousal. Well, I have that calm and meditative state partly because I also meditate, which is also good for focus. I didn't say that because I feel like a lot of people on YouTube are saying this. You've probably heard that already, but you can just set a timer on your phone and sit down on your bed and just focus on your breath and then that will help you with focusing on the actual work when you get to it it will help you with flow states we've spoken about bringing you to the right mental headspace and right circumstance using protocols backed by science however the truth is that you need to be the one to snap yourself out of it and do the hard work especially when you don't feel like it do what's required and not your best because often your best isn't good enough so if you do what's required suddenly you do it so long 
that your best is better than what's required and you can excel. I used to get brain fog all the time and I thought it was setting me back every single time I had it. I wish that I could just be performing my best just somehow. And one of the last times I had it, I was working on some YouTube video and I really could not think. And then I just pushed through it and I did it. That video ended up getting more views than I usually get. It's like 1K, it was pretty good. Basically what I'm saying is that the perfect circumstance is the one where you sit down and do the work regardless of how you're feeling or regardless of what you're thinking. You've got some goal. And the reason why a lot of people fail in getting that same goal is because they feel what hard feels like and they quit. And this is what hard feels like, this brain fog, not even knowing where you're going, not knowing if you're doing things right, just doing regardless, that is what hard feels like. Where you are right now is where most people will quit and you will not quit because you know that others would have and you will smile because you know that you didn't and you haven't and you won't. You can just do the work and honestly, even if it's bad, you can just come back later. And even if you can't come back later to fix the little errors and make little edits, you've still gotten better at the skill of doing the work even when you were at your worst. And if you can get good at doing the work, even when you're at your worst, think about that, doing what's required, suddenly you're better than what's required. And doing the work, when you're at your worst, you do it so much that it looks like somebody else's best. Ooh, ooh, good job, buddy. <laughs> every moment waited is a moment wasted. And every wasted moment degrades your sense of clarity and direction of purpose and will leave you feeling more stressed and more stressed and more stressed and more doubtful. I love you, bro. Stop waiting. Get this out of the way. Mwah.